Now let's study about the effects of electric current. The electric current produces three major effects. The first effect is heating effect. The second effect is magnetic effect. And the third effect is chemical effect. In this chapter, we will study about the heating effect. Now let's study about the heating effect. What happened that you have, you must have seen the heating appliances like the electric heater, the electric toaster, the geyser, the dryers, etc. These all heating appliances get heat up when the electric current is passed through it. Basically, the phenomenon is that when the electric current is passed through the heating appliance or the heating element such as nichrome wire, then the heat is generated and this is called the heating effect of current. Now, let's study in detail about the phenomenon behind it. When the electric current is passed through a conductor, in this case, let's say a nichrome wire. So, when the electric current passes through the nichrome wire, then as it passes through, then it has to work against the resistance of the wire. The nichrome wire generally has a high resistance. The current has to struggle against the resistance of the nichrome wire. The wire has a high resistance, thus the struggling of the current is also very high because the current has to remove the opposition created by the resistance. Like for example, you can also understand it in this way that while walking or while running, the frictional force provides the opposition to our motion. While we walk or while we run, there exists a frictional force against a motion. Thus, the mechanical force provided by a body works against the frictional force, enabling us to walk easily. So, in the case of electricity, the walking part is considered as the flow of current. The mechanical energy is your electrical energy and frictional force is your resistance. So, the electrical energy has to work in an opposite manner so as to overcome the resistance or the opposition provided by the nichrome wire. If the current overcomes the high resistance, then it can flow easily. So, during this work of the current to fight against the opposition of the resistance, this work is converted into heat energy. That is the amount of work done by the current to overcome the resistance of the nichrome wire is equals to the amount of heat generated. So this is how the electrical energy got converted into the heat energy. And due to the conversion of this electrical energy into the heat energy, the heating appliances are working. The heating element used in these heating appliances as I have already told you is a nichrome wire. The property of the nichrome wire is that it offers a high resistance. For the heating element which have high resistance, so the opposition offered is also very high. Thus the current has to build up a higher force in order to overcome that opposition and thus the high amount of heat is generated. If Q is the amount of charge flowing through the conductor, the current is flowing, so the charge will be also flowing. So, we have assumed that Q, capital Q is the charge flowing in a conductor when a potential difference V is applied. Okay, when the charge is flowing in a conductor, then a work is done. So, we can represent work done as Q into V. You know that current is equals to charge upon time. So, from here we can write that Q is equals to I cross T. From Ohm's law, we have seen that V is equals to I R. What you have to do that if you mark this equation as 1 and this equation as A and B. So, putting A and B in equation 1. Okay, now you have to put the values from A and B and put it in equation 1. What you will get that work done is equals to instead of Q we are going to place I into T and instead of V we are going to place I into R. 
So what is the formula now? The formula would become I square R T. This is the formula for work done. I have already told you that the amount of work done by the current in order to overcome the opposition of the resistance is equal to the amount of heat generated. That is this work done is also equals to the amount of heat generated. That is what is the formula of heat? Capital H is represented for the heat. The formula for heat is I square RT. So from this formula, we can easily conclude that the heat is directly proportional to current. The heat is also directly proportional to resistance. The heat is also directly proportional to time taken by the current to flow through the conduct. The heat energy that we have seen is given by the formula H is equals to I square R T. Okay, so this formula is also called Joule's law of heating. This Joule's law of heating states that the heat is generated in a conductor when the current is passed through it and the conductor is having a resistance capital R. The current flows through the conductor is in a time period denoted by small t. So, H is equals to R square RT is a law of Joule's law of heating. Now, let's see from this particular formula that what are the parameters on which the heating depends upon. The first parameter that you can see from this formula is I square R. Okay, now let's talk about I. Capital I denotes current. Okay, so heat is directly proportional to current square. In this formula, you can easily deduce that there is a sign of direct proportionality between the two. Okay, that is when heat increases, the current also increases. Now, just see it carefully that the heat is proportional to the square times of the current. That is, if the current becomes two times, then the heat increases four times. If the current becomes 3 times, then the heat increases 9 times because there is a sign of proportionality in between. So, the next on which the heat is dependent upon that is time period T. T is the time period up to which the current flows into the conductor. The heat is directly proportional to the time period T. That is, the time period up to which the current is flowing in the conductor, then the heat is generated into it. It is directly proportional to it, so it also means that when we increase the heat, the time period also increases. Or we can say so that when the time period increases, the heat also increases. Now the third parameter on which the heat is dependent is R. That is resistance. Okay, now let's see. The heat is directly proportional to the resistance also. That is, if the resistance increases, the heat also increases. Now we have already discussed that there are two combinations of resistance. The one is your series and the other one is your parallel combination of resistance. Okay, when we talk about the series combination, in series combination, the total resistance increases and in parallel combination, the total resistance decreases. This we have discussed and the formula was also deduced for you. Now, if the in series combination, the total resistance is increasing, so the heat also increasing. We can say so that when the resistances are connected in series, then the heat generated in the series combination increases. Now let's talk about the parallel combination. In parallel combination, the total resistance decreases, so the heat also decreases. So we can conclude that in parallel combination, if the resistances are connected, so the heat generated is also very less. So from resistance part, we can say that in series, the heat generated is very high and in parallel, the heat generated is very low. So, these are the basic properties and the parameters on which the heat is dependent upon. During heat calculation, if 
current resistance and time is given to you then you have for use the formula h is equals to i square rt and sometimes in the numericals power is given to you so when the power is given to you then you have to use the formula p into t p stands for power and t stands for time period so these are the two formulas indicating the same heat energy now all electrical appliances do not produce heat only the electrical heating appliances produce heat like for example room heaters geysers dryers electric kettle they produce heat because they are the heating appliances when the current is passed through them then the heating material used in those appliances gets heated up and provides us the heat energy but the other electrical appliances like for example fan the mixer the washing machine they are not heating appliances okay so they don't produce heat because they don't use the heating element now if the current is passed through it then some amount of heat is produced in them like for example you have seen the fan when the electricity is passed through it then it converts the whole energy to rotate the blades of the fan okay it does not produce heat energy enough but some amount of heat is still generated when the fan kept on for longer time so in order to rotate the blades of the fan the electrical energy got converted into negligible amount of heat energy 